Hey guys, this is Dave here. I haven't posted a video in a while because I had to get a brand new hip installed. But now that that's done, uh, I've been back on the boat working and actually got some trim tab improvements done that I think you're going to like. Uh, these are called drop fins. They're made by Bennett. And the, the whole point of the drop fin is to add some vertical surface to the trim tabs themselves so that when they lower down and do their work, right, the water flows through the channel instead of allowing some of that water to escape on the sides. Kind of the same theory as the winglets you see on an airplane. So I'm going to show you how I installed these and maybe even take a look at what the performance improvements were. And we'll see maybe it's a project you'll want to do. So here we go. One of the challenges you'll have fitting a Bennett drop fin to a Linco trim tab that comes on the Ranger Tugs is the hinge that's welded to the bottom of the tab. That creates the need for a notch in the drop fin to allow it to fit flush against the bottom surface of the trim tab. That allows it to fit around the hinge and not cause a problem. And those notches are relatively easy to cut. You just have to have either an angle grinder or a bandsaw or something to notch out that material. And once you do that, you'll have a really good tight fit of the drop fin to the trim tab surface. So for the drop fin project, you're going to need some tools. Uh, we're doing some metal working here, so you're going to need some heavy duty stuff. Uh, and one of the things you're going to need first is to decide whether you're going to cut the notches out if necessary on your drop fins. Uh, you can use a bandsaw to do that. The bandsaw method worked really well. The, uh, if, if not, you can use a angle grinder. You can get those very cheap at uh, most uh, tool supply stores. A good thing to have around the house anyway, very useful tool. That with a cutoff wheel uh, will cut off those notches just fine too. In that case, you'll probably, you wanna have a vise so that you can clamp those into a vertical position and cut those notches in a secure manner. Of course, you're always going to need eye protection. I don't have that on the table here, but you're always going to need eye protection. You're going to need a straight edge so you can line up your trim tabs or to make marks. You're going to need a brand new 732nd inch drill bit. Why brand new? Well, you're doing stainless steel holes, and 732s is the exact size of the holes on the drop fins. So with a 732nd inch brand new bit, I was able to just clamp the drop fins to the trim tabs, use a battery powered drill and drill those holes very efficiently. One tip for that is to use a cutting oil on the tip of the bit just to give it some lubrication and you'll get all uh, 16 holes out of those, out of this bit and it's pretty much used up. The last few holes were taken, you know, probably a third to a half longer than the original ones. But we're talking 10, 15 seconds to drill those holes. Didn't have to take the trim tabs off the boat. Didn't have to rebed them and worry about leaks or anything like that. So a brand new 732nd inch bit. This one has a pilot uh, point on it, which uh, helped get it centered in the hole. And... Uh, then all those holes lined up perfectly with the drop fin holes when I was done drilling. In order to get the holes to line up perfectly, you want to clamp the trim tab and the drop fins together. For that, I used a couple of my vice grip clamps that I use in the welding shop. If you don't have those, you can use C-clamps, but you're going to want some kind of tight, surface, uh, tight clamping force between the two. And then I drilled one hole put a screw in, drilled another hole, put a screw in, and I took the clamps off and drilled the other two holes. System worked very well. Uh, you're gonna need fastener tools. Uh, you pick the fastener of your choice. I ended up using 10 slash 24 Phillips pan head screws and then a uh, lock wash, lock wa a washer 
and a locking nut on top of that with a nylock, uh, nylon in the nut so that they won't back off. So that's really the tools that you're gonna need. It's a pretty simple project, but we'll walk you through how we did it. And then hopefully at the end, we'll have some video of what it looks like after they're installed. To cut the notches in the drop pins to get around the hinge on the trim tab, I used the bandsaw, raised it up to the vertical position, and just uh, carefully cut those notches out. And that made for a good tight fit of the drop fin to the trim tab, and it looks a lot better at the end of the installation. Once I had the notches cut in the drop fins, I was able to clamp them to the edge of the trim tab. That clamping, getting it lined up with the straight edge and making sure that everything was square, uh, made for a relatively easy drilling operation. Now, the metal is not bent exactly at 90 degrees, so you'll see a little bit of variance there. But my goal was to get the two bent edges of the fin and the tab uh, to be flush and then I'll worry about how you know getting them both vertical 90 degrees uh, later. So once you have it clamped though you can take your 732nd inch bit clutch it into your drill or chuck it into your drill and then begin drilling your holes. If you notch your drop fin, then it will end at the very end of the trim tab, which actually may give you about an extra inch of trim tab plane because the, uh, the angled off corners on the trim tab will be now consumed by the trailing edge of the drop fin. I'll drill this hole in real time. This is not sped up and makes it relatively easy to, to see how easy it is to drill the holes with the tab on the boat. I thought this was much easier than taking the tab off of the boat and using a drill press or marking holes and those kind of things. Having the trim tab attached and making sure everything was square, clamping it in place and using the holes on the drop fin as a guide that that just made the installation very straightforward and easy. Again, drilling this hole in real time, you can see it takes five, maybe 10 seconds and is very easy. Just take your time, keep your drill blade or drill bit speed in the medium, low to medium range and keep your drill bit oiled and it'll go through like butter. And then once you have your holes cut, it's just a matter of attaching your first two fasteners. I used the fastener with a button head and attached it from the bottom so that the nut was on top of the trim tab makes a smoother water flow on your fasteners below on the bottom of the trim tab and uh, I used a button head instead of a bolt for that reason just to smooth the water flow as it comes across those fasteners. With two holes drilled and fastened, you can now take the clamps off, drill the other two holes, fasten those, and you have just completed one half of one trim tab.
with Elvin Ray sitting on the trailer, there's no interference with the bunks, and I don't see any way that the drop fins could get damaged or anything during trailering. And uh, I don't think they look that bad either. So we'll see how they do out on the water. So let me say right up front, these are not equal operating condition scenarios. The gauge on the left shows a fully weighted boat. We were provisioned for two weeks. We had a full tank of fuel and we were just setting out for the trip. And I wanted to snap a picture of the high utilization of gas that I was experiencing. I was at 4,700 RPM uh, cruising at 24 miles per hour and had a economy of 2.1 miles to the gallon. On the right hand side, you'll see the first trip with the drop fins installed, less fuel, but at 4,700 RPM, I had picked up a couple miles per hour. That could be due to the weight difference and the fuel difference, but you'll notice the fuel economy bump and the uh, fuel flow being about a gallon per hour less. So that's a better case scenario. But again, I think part of that's related to the weight. Here's another shot I took of a, with the drop fins on our first trip out. This was uh, engine trimmed at three but the speed of 24 miles per hour getting 2.6 miles to the gallon and a fuel flow below 10 gallons per hour which whenever i've been on plane i've usually seen more than 10 gallons per hour of fuel flow now gallons per hour is not the best measure miles per gallon is but 2.6 at 24 miles per hour i would take that then one final interesting reading this was at 5100 rpm I was actually able to get 2.1 miles to the gallon at 29 miles per hour. So uh, fuel flow 13.7 looks bad, but 2.1 miles to the gallon is what I was getting at 4,700 RPM on you know the other trip. And so 2.1 miles to the gallon, I'll take that all day long, but I could cruise about four miles per hour faster. So uh, I'll, I'll take both of those numbers and Part of that may be attributed to the weight, but I think part of it also has to be attributed to the drop fins. So we'll see uh, how the drop fins look coming at it from the drone perspective. I tried to get some drone shots. The angles aren't perfect, but again, these scenarios are closer because the boat we had out on Lake Hickory and the uh, conditions were similar. What we had on the boat were similar and the fuel load was similar in these conditions. So let's take a look at those. All right, so here's a couple of screenshots of the drone footage. And you can see that the photo on the left is without the drop fins. The photo on the right is with the drop fins. Not the exact same angle, but as close as, close as I could get. And if you look on the left, the starboard trim tab is what I was focused on in these both these photos. And it just looks like that one's a little less organized than the photo on the right where the drop fins are installed and the wake itself looks so just a little sharper and uh, again I'm not sure if that's the drop fins or other environmental conditions so the jury is kind of still out on whether or not the drop fins are that effective but I think for my total investment of about fifty dollars maybe a few dollars over fifty I think it's been a worthwhile investment I'll uh, continue to keep an eye on these and see how they do and report back if I have any significant findings. Thanks for watching.